Little Lover, the complete miraculous ladybug fanfiction series, written and narrated by Mira Rose, with artwork by Ayeru on Pixiv. I will have Ayeru linked in the description box. Please enjoy Little Lover. Part 1 Marinette Dupang Chang as Multimouse there were benefits to being the guardian of the miraculous, specifically that of using a miraculous to get the attention of your crush. Well, okay, it's not that Marinette had a crush on her partner, Cat Noir, per se. It was a smart conclusion to a problem she had. Marinette spent so much time and energy pining after a romance in the last year and she realized if she just dated someone, she wouldn't have to waste the energy on wishful thinking. But, of course, whomever she dated would have to know she needed to balance her being superheroes and a high school girl. And they couldn't be, like, super into her because that would be exhausting. Cat Noir fit the criteria. He liked Ladybug, so maybe he'd be open to a rebound relationship. That, and he wouldn't weigh her down when it came to an Akuma fight, with silly things like postponing her exit by making sure she was safe and hidden first. So, well, maybe Cat Noir would date Marinette if she was a different Miraculous Holder. A Miraculous Holder whose identity he already knew. An identity that was as cute as a mouse. Her idea worked well. A little too well, actually. When Multimouse started spending time with Cat Noir, he asked her out within a week. Maybe he had a type, but she couldn't let the worries attached to intrusive thoughts burden her. This was a light relationship, something easy to help balance the chaos of being a superheroine and a high school student. Little lover... Multimouse smiled as she heard Cat Noir enter the cafe. Call it a scandal, but Paris ate up their relationship, and it was nice being able to meet him openly without battling rumors. She didn't care about what people thought of Cat and Mouse, and if Hawkmoth tried to kidnap her, she'd be able to put spots on so fast he wouldn't know what bugged him. Hello, kitten. Edit. I brought you something. Cat slid into the seat across from her and pulled out a tumbler. A Cat Noir themed present? I'm flattered. I mean, you need something to drink out of when you're at school. As much as she wanted to roll her eyes, he had a point. Thanks. I actually broke my water bottle at lunch today, so the timing couldn't be any better. You're welcome. He leaned forward, and she knew he wanted her to ruffle his hair. They weren't at the kissing stage yet, and she was okay with that. He was just a distraction, after all. This wasn't real. How's that project you were telling me about? Oh, my advanced biology? It's... um... it's going. Wanna work on it together? Are you offering to tutor me, Cat Noir? I took advanced biology last year in my high school. I know a thing or two. Lucky. I took physics instead, and now I wish I did them in the opposite order. What? You don't think physics makes you a better superhero? What? Listen, listen. Learning physics was life-changing for me as a superhero, is all I'm saying. Multimouse laughed. She hadn't paid much attention in classes between Akuma fights and worrying that Adrian might drop out of school last year. What, you actually pay attention in class? Rude. And yes, when I'm not thinking about a little mouse, I'm an excellent student. Didn't you tell me about lying to your teacher yesterday? There was an Akuma. That doesn't count. Uh-huh. Sure. I'll have you know, Ladybug's the same way. 
She crossed her arms. Are you calling Ladybug a liar? I ain't calling her a truther. Okay. She had to laugh at that reference. But part of her heart tore at him, thinking of her as a liar, even if it was out of necessity. Fair enough, fair enough. Secret identities and all that. So, can I plan on a little biology homework tonight? Wait, you're serious? Multimouse leaned back. So far, their dating was mostly publicity stunts and meeting up for food. She had suspicions he was only doing this to make Ladybug jealous, but doing homework together was... well... huh. Well, it was nice, at least. Your place? How do you know my... Oh, right. Yeah, he knew she was Marinette. You really want to meet my dad again now that you're actually my boyfriend? At the risk of being inappropriate. If he gets akumatized again, we can turn it into a date. She rolled her eyes, grinning. That is inappropriate. How dare you be so blunt? Six, he tried. Yeah, sounds great. Multimouse grabbed the bag by her seat and handed it to him. These are for you. Cat looked at the white bag, biting his lower lip as he smiled. Okay. When he flicked his eyes from the bag to her like that, she couldn't help but be attracted to him. Guess it's carb day. Thanks, Multimouse. And Multimouse's dad. I'll have you know it's from my mother. Thank you very much. His grin grew wider, and her heart fluttered. No, no heart fluttering. This is casual. They hadn't even kissed. Bad, bad heart. Stop that. Great. Uh, well, um, I'll, I'll, I'll see you tonight. Even so soon. If she didn't want to be emotionally compromised by straight teeth and a mask, then she had to. Yeah. Sorry, now that you brought up homework, I remembered I had to go do an assignment. Sorry, tonight? Tonight, Cat shrugged, leaning over and brushing her bangs out of the way. Thanks for the, um, thanks for the tumbler. Why was he so close? He didn't, like, mistake her red cheeks for a cold or something, did he? Of course. Something touched her forehead. Did he... Did Cat just kiss her? Well, forehead kiss her? Did she get forehead kissed? Hmm? Multimouse covered up her confusion as she leaned back as if she had a question. I said, see you tonight. Cat scooted his chair back and stood, taking the bag of baked goods with him. I'll leave first. Multimouse could feel Tiki staring from the bag she kept underneath the table. Exhaling slowly, she stood and took the scraps of her cafe food to the trash, trying to keep her expression even as civilians looked on. A forehead kiss. Huh. Wonder what that meant. Oh, he was just being polite. That was it. Same old cat noir. Good thing they weren't serious, else she'd spend the rest of the day overanalyzing what just happened. But thankfully, she didn't need to. They were just casual lovers, meant to be a little blip in their personal dating histories. <sighs> yeah. A little blip. The forehead kiss was just a little blip. Part 2 Marinette Dupang Chang, pacing the living room floor. So after explaining to her parents that she was, in fact, dating Cat Noir and answering about a hundred questions, Marinette began wearing out the rug in the living room as Tiki looked on. It's not a date, you guys! 
she said. The Kwamis looked on with raised eyebrows, exchanging looks. Don't humans call doing something with their romantic partners dates? One of them asked. Don't start, Tiki whispered. Go on upstairs, all of you, Marinette said, pointing to the ceiling. A collective groan answered her, as well as mumbles about wanting to see Plague, and the mini Squishmallow-esque sidekicks flew upward, disappearing as she heard footsteps outside the door. Talk about timing. Hey, Marinette. Cat grinned as soon as his eyes met hers, lighting up like he was, well, her lover. Was he that happy to be here? As it turns out, he was. While he didn't help with the project the entire night, as it was more of a one-person kind of thing, he laid on the floor next to her, scribbling crayons into a biology coloring book. He didn't talk much, so she worked in peace. Marinette hadn't had this kind of silence since she became the guardian, as the Kwamis were actually behaving tonight. Are you hungry? Marinette asked, her voice soft from lack of use. Why, um, do you need snacks? The sleep in his voice caught her off guard. Cat was tired. He was tired, but still laying on her bedroom floor, coloring with crayons. Was he doing that thing where you just hang out in the same room to spend time with someone? Did Cat want to spend time with her? With Marinette? And why would Cat want to spend time with Marinette? Was he taking this seriously? Are you bored? She tried. Hmm? You've been coloring for, like, an hour. Are you bored? Because you don't have to stay here if you don't want to. I want to. Marinette didn't know what to say to that. It's not like she could ask him if they were friends, either, because, well, he was her boyfriend, somehow. For the first time... Marinette began to doubt the ingenuity of her idea to date him. He asked her out to help him get over Ladybug. He said that. Cat was on board with this plan. So why then did he take this so seriously? Okay. She turned back to her project, unable to concentrate. This was the opposite of her goal. Dating Cat shouldn't distract her. It's a shame you can't get a refund on a relationship because she almost wanted to call the whole thing off. Almost. You look just about done. Cat sat up, his cheek red from leaning on his hand, and nodded at her project. Uh, yeah, just about. Was he checking to see if he could go home? Are you packing up? I mean, do you want me to? Um, yes. No? Cool. Cat turned back to his coloring book, choosing another color to scribble into hydronium ions. Is that homework? Nah, passive studying. She didn't have a comeback for that. If he was seriously in this relationship, then she didn't know how much to tease him. Okay. Cool. Oh, why was she so awkward? Marinette didn't even like this guy. Well, like, like him, that is. Ugh, even thinking about it is awkward. She hadn't had thoughts like this since before she got over... Wait. Wait, wait, wait. What is this? Are these the feels? Oh, the power of suggestion. 
Marinette's heart dropped to her stomach as she stared at Cat Noir. No. No. She didn't like him. She couldn't like him. And it would be a problem to get tongue-tied around him as Ladybug when they were out in the field. She didn't like him. She couldn't like him. But did she like him? Had Marinette, as a result of her own decision, started to fall for her partner? (sighs) Talk about a game of cat and mouse. So you're just gonna chill here? Isn't that what boyfriends do? I... I suppose. Cool. Cool. That didn't go as planned. Marinette stared at her PowerPoint, then turned to Cat, ruffling his hair to grab his attention. Yeah? He said. Wanna play Mario Party? Deal. He slid the pencil back in its case and set it atop his book. Dibs on Yoshi. I'm not gonna try and take Yoshi from you. Promise? I promise. And then yes, 100%. I'm down to play Mario Party with you. Good. Her words felt forced, and Marinette wondered if she'd brushed her hair. This is a problem. She's not supposed to have butterflies for Cat Noir. And he would for sure break her heart if she fell for him. Unless she wore her spotted suit, which made her ache in a different way. Great. He flashed a smile as anxiety flashed across her chest. (sighs) So much for a relationship that didn't come with emotional constipation. Unlike what she planned, Marinette found herself falling for yet another guy. At least this time. She could beat him at Mario Party as she fell into an emotional abyss. Part 3 Marinette Dupang Chang as Multi-Mouse Disneyland Paris This was a date. Multi-Mouse stood at the gates of Disneyland, waiting for her boyfriend to get passes for their date. A date! Which would make sense because, well, he was her boyfriend, but going to Disneyland together didn't feel like they were just hanging out. She was promised hanging out. Well, she suggested they hang out more often, hoping it would turn into a relationship. And then Cat Noir flat out asked to be her boyfriend a month ago instead. Cat Noir taking her hand in his and leading her inside of Disneyland felt like something out of a fever dream, or a PR specialist's daydream. She teased him about being a scaredy cat, and now he insisted on taking her to Phantom Manor to restore his honor or something like that. There's Not too much to be scared of when you're falling for your partner, after all. What's wrong? Cat said, grinning when it was all said and done. What's wrong? What's wrong is that Multimouse was falling for him. This feels like a date. He raised an eyebrow, looking at her like she was goofy. This is a date, little lover. Aren't we just, like, hanging out? Cat blinked, looking to a faced character as a group of little girls in poofy dresses ran to tackle a similarly dressed woman. Um, no? I I mean, yeah, what? what? Multimouse felt her face flush as she realized what he meant. You aren't... uh, aren't you... Only dating me to make Ladybug jealous? What? Cat's voice dropped. Who said that? Aren't you? 
He flashed a quick smile to a couple who complimented their cosplays, but Cat Noir's eyes never left hers. Marinette, he whispered, what gave you that idea? The last year of him declaring his love to her in spotted spandex, for starters? And how he said he needed to get over Ladybug the week before they started dating? So, wait, are you... in this? Even as Ladybug, Marinette hadn't seen Cat Noir flabbergasted like this. Yes. His answer was so definitive, she couldn't fight it. Yes, I, I of, of course I am. I, you, you prefer to date casually? Well, when you put it like that, she felt terrible about her decision about all this. No? She squeaked. Multi Mouse knew Cat Noir well enough to understand the way his eyes slanted meant he was disappointed in her right now. Ouch. It's one thing to have a crush break your heart, but somehow this was worse than Adrian misunderstanding something at the height of her feelings for him. I see. Cat? Would you like me to take you home, or should we split up here? The day was young, but Multi Mouse's eyebrows rose like the sun in the sky. Cat? Together or separate? Oh, she'd messed up. That's. I'll walk you to the gate. The walk back was long and somewhat cold despite the sun and summer illuminating the streets around her. Everything bustled, but Multimouse and Cat Noir walked quietly. She should say something. How could she say something? Sorry, she began. For? Misleading you. I'm the one who misunderstood. He walked her through the exit, then stopped, taking her hand in his. Even so. Hey, Multimouse? Yes? Are we still on for Saturday? Uh, Saturday? Her heart somersaulted when she realized she hadn't wrecked things between them. Yeah. Yeah, we're still on for Saturday. Thanks for accommodating my change of heart today, little lover. Cat pulled her hand to his face, holding eye contact as he kissed the inside of her wrist. Well, see you Saturday. Multimouse's chest rose as he dropped her hand and turned around to walk away. What? What was that? A A blip. That wasn't normal, Cat Noir. Uh, Sure, he was a flirt, but a wrist kiss was... like... a forehead kiss on steroids. He didn't mean it. He was just... flirting? Oh, cheese and crackers. This is a hot summer. She should get inside, or at least find some trees... There were already the red splotches of a sunbird plastered across her cheeks. Marinette? Tiki whispered from her purse. What's wrong? Cat Noir was out of sight now, so Multimouse turned to return to the park. She had an all-day pass, after all. Come on, Tiki. I know they've got some sweets you're dying to try, Multi-mouse? Tiki tried again. This is bad, Tiki. What is? She didn't want to put it into words. Words would make this real. It wasn't just a blip, was it? Marinette? He called me little lover from the start. Yes, Yes, he did. 
So I'm falling for him, and he's serious about this relationship. Is that a bad thing? Multi Mouse covered her face with her forearms. I'm not sure. It wasn't a blip, which means her reactions aren't just her being entertained by a flirt. She was falling for Cat Noir. Genuinely. Marinette was falling for Cat Noir, and for the second time in a row, she wasn't sure if she'd ever be able to tell her crush how she really feels. Oh, cheese and crackers. Marinette only made good plans when she wore her ladybug mask. Everything else was the whims of a klutz. Part 4 Marinette Dupang Chang Marinette! What do I do, Tiki? Marinette! This isn't real. It's a temporary hyperfixation. Yeah, hyperfixation. I don't actually like him. Marinette! Besides, even if he does like me, which, I mean, come on on, then we couldn't actually date because, like, what happens if we get serious? Do I tell him I, like, you know, ladybug? Or what happens if he need- chooses to protect Marinette during an Akuma fight, no matter how much I insist he needs to go and fight, and then I don't get a chance to transform into ladybug? Marinette! Tiki, I- Marinette! Tiki put her little foot down, all but barreling into Marinette's face to grab her attention. You're burning my cookies! Sorry. She opened the oven door, forgetting to use a hot pad before cursing at her seared palm. Here. What if you just, you know, dated him? Tiki asked. Well, there was that option. <laughs> like, enjoy the relationship? That's too risky. All relationships come with risk. Half the cookies were already missing. Why should this one be any different? Because he's Cat Noir. You humans are strange. You aren't helping. What's the harm? What's the harm? Marinette repeated. What's the harm? I don't know. Maybe sharing my evenings with Cat Noir and filling up coloring books together. And that's a bad thing? Something red bit her cheeks, washing her in a blanket of heat. Well, no, it, it isn't, but... She crossed her arms, unsure of how to continue. It just... no. Well, I'm not the guardian. It's not my decision to make. Tiki floated to the cookie tray. I'll talk to you after you've reached your calorie count. It'll be easier for both of us. Okay. Frustrated, Marinette stomped upstairs into the patio. Even a nice sunny lounge on the roof wouldn't give her an answer, and she couldn't justify anything that was going on in her personal life. She and Cat Noir were dating. She thought they could be each other's emotional rebounds and help keep them focused moving forward, but apparently not. The patio wasn't the best idea after all. Instead of catching air and a clear conscience, Marinette got a cat boy with boba tea. Here, Cat said, landing next to her with such precision she jumped at his arrival. Cat, Marinette scolded. Hey. Cat! You good there, Marinette? He took a sip of his drink, still holding out the boba he got for her. Cat! This was becoming a pattern for her, wasn't it? Cat, what are you doing here? I wanted a drink and thought of you. You thought of me? Yeah, so I got one for you too. Strawberry, right? Um, yeah, right. It was a safe guess for most people. What do you have? 
Kiwi with watermelon pearls. Ah. The conversation fell flat, leaving her no choice but to take the drink from him. Uh, thanks. Of course. His smile made her want to pat his head and praise him further, and she resisted the urge. The tea was good, and... well... Did you bring your coloring book? She tried. What? Cat took a sip, mulling it over. Oh, that. Did that bug you or something? No. Words vibrated inside her chest, but her vocal cords couldn't translate them. I just... it looked like a good book. Do you want one? I can pick one up if you'd like. I, I was just thinking, why do you use it to study? I had an anatomy one I liked, so it seems like a good transition. You're studying anatomy? Turns out I like helping people. Cat looked out at the city. I'm studying to be a surgeon. A surgeon? How else can I save lives when I retire from the superhero business? She blinked a few times. There were lots of options besides surgery, but Cat Noir? Being someone other than Cat Noir? She knew this would come to an end someday, but she didn't realize Cat Noir did, too. Well, of course he did, but this felt... real. Cat Noir felt real a little too often recently. Why me? The question came out by accident, but Marinette meant it. She elaborated when a crease appeared between Cat's eyebrows. Why date me? Cat took a sip, then set his drink down. Don't take this the wrong way. A delightful start, thank you. It's because you let yourself get angry angry. You, you like me because I'm angry? I can't do it by myself. Get upset with people, that is. I swallow it, glass after glass, all while wondering if I'll vomit up my feelings in public or private. You've lost me. I envy you, Marinette. He looked at her. I envy your anger. It keeps you honest. I don't know how to feel about that. My interest in your anger? Yeah. Your honesty caught my attention. Is it so wrong for my admiration to turn to affection? A chuckle escaped. It's certainly not the most romantic way I've been adored. It's a compliment nonetheless. Thanks. I feel better. Confused, but better. So, we're still dating? He picked his drink back up, finally looking away from her. It'd been a habit of his, she'd noticed. He was good at talking about vulnerable things, but would find something else to stare at whenever an answer could hurt him. Um, yeah. Marinette tapped the tumbler. Yeah, I'd like that. Good. Cat's eyes met hers and heat hit her cheeks. That makes me happy. Still on for Saturday? Yeah, still on for Saturday. Cat leaned over and brushed her bangs aside before planting a kiss on her forehead. See you then. Wait! Marinette caught his ankle as he scooted on the landing. Yes? Pushing herself onto her toes, Marinette pressed her lips to his cheek. Be safe. I will. He looked away, biting his lip as he smiled. I'll, um, I'll, I'll, yeah, see, see you around, Marinette. Later, kitty. They were a couple. Marinette and Cat Noir were playing a game of cat and mouse. 
willingly. Huh. Well, that would mean more forehead kisses, more little blips and flutters in the belly. That would be nice. Butterflies without a mask or while thinking of Adrian Agrest. He liked her. Cat Noir liked her. Maybe not as much as he liked Ladybug, but that was all right. It was a teenage relationship. Nothing too serious. Just a person who would bring her drinks and call her with her as she did her homework. This might just be the best fluke Marinette ever tripped across in recent memory. Part 5 Marinette Dupang Chang as Maltime Mouse Disneyland Paris Bistro Chez Remy Cat Noir booking a table at the Ratatouille-themed restaurant in Disneyland for their six-month anniversary was, without doubt, a Cat Noir-like thing to do. But Maltime Mouse loved it. The theme park became that of a go-to for them over the past half year. Not because it was fun, but because it's one of the few places they could wear their masks without grabbing too much attention. In here, they were just a couple playing dress-up, not Parisian superheroes on a date. They could go on rides or watch movies. They could dine or grab an ice cream cone. They could compete or they could people watch. It was a magical experience that only cost a pass and a lack of privacy. You seem right at home, Cat teased, taking a photo as she looked around the restaurant. Multi Mouse wasn't smaller than her marinette counterpart, but the extra large umbrellas and decor felt a bit like when she used her multiply powers. If I fit in, then you must be out of the bag, she shot back. It wasn't a good comeback, but the only one she could think of. What are you getting? Are you going to do that thing where you wait to see what I order, then get the exact same thing? Um, I swear, it's like you don't know how to have your own tastes. Seriously, Cat, it's not like we're making dinner together. Order what you'd like. Right. Yeah. Cat set down his camera a Polaroid that would leave Disney characters when the picture printed out, and stared at the menu. It took a few months to figure out that him ordering whatever she did wasn't him being polite or cute. He genuinely didn't know what his tastes were, almost as though he'd always have dinner chosen for him instead of having an opinion on what he ate. Uh, uh, It really looks good. Multi Mouse mumbled on purpose. Leading him in the wrong direction would get him to study the menu for things that might suit his tastes instead of hers. Oh, right! Totally. I might get that, actually. Oh, what do you think? She sighed, but didn't give him a hard time. Six months of this cat, and she still held her tongue. I think I want to know who you are under that mask. It slipped out, but it wasn't an accident. Multi-mouse ate her guilt when she dined with him for weeks, and it burned a hole like acid in her stomach. The ruse should be up for both of them. He lowered his menu and tilted his head. Multi-mouse. If I tell you something, you have to promise to not get mad. Of course. He set the menu down, and with it, her gut. What's going on? I'm Ladybug. Multi Mouse timed it to align with a server approaching their table. The little chef with Ratatouille has the entree, please, she said after exchanging greetings. Um, same, Cat said, swallowing. Multi Mouse knew better than to give him grief about matching her order in this situation. 
The server laughed after taking their order, and with it, silence. She shared eye contact with Cat over their appetizers, entrees, and even dessert. If blinks were euros, she could pay rent with what they exchanged in their hour of dining. By all accounts, Cat said, breaking the silence as he broke into the fromage blanc with a spoon. It doesn't make sense. Ladybug? Yeah, I've seen you both at the same time. I have my ways, kitty. Multibos couldn't taste her, Claire. She hadn't tasted any of her meal, actually, and had to monitor how much her legs shook by checking the vibrations in her water glass. Well, he set a spoon down, dessert only half finished. It wouldn't be like you to lie to me. You believe me? Cat looked from his dessert to her. Yes. And I owe you an apology. An apology? She meant to correct him on how she'd never lie to him. I'm... <sighs> um... Cat blew a breath, drumming his fingers on the tabletop. Well, uh, this is hard. Are you about to tell me your identity? Do you, um, do you not want me to? Right, uh, that makes sense. But it was a risk. Uh, actually, don't. Don't? Yeah, uh, don't. Chocolate covered her throat as she polished off her eclair. That was why she couldn't find the words. Right? I mean, it's a risk. I shouldn't have told you about the, um, other partnership between us, but, well, better to cut my consequences here. Wait, wait. He reached for her hand, and she startled. Uh, sorry, um. Uh, go, go, uh, go ahead. She didn't mean to pull away from him but both her hands landed in her lap faster than she could decide where she wanted them. Right. Um, why date as a mouse? He didn't need to elaborate. It wasn't supposed to get serious. Excuse me? Rebound. You needed a rebound? Uh, sorry. Multi Mouse couldn't look at him. But I really do like you now, Cat. A rebound from Luca? <laughs> no. Then who? She looked up to see Cat leaning across the table, half a meter away. Um. She couldn't say it. She had to say it. I never dated him, but I had this bonkers crush, and... On who, Marinette? Does it matter? I, I mean, not in the grand scheme of things, but I'd like to go home tonight and not leave the guy that the girl I liked had a crush on up to the imagination after finding out she changed her identity to ask me out so it wouldn't be serious, as opposed to dating me in the context where I know her best. The one relief in this conversation is that no one passing by would be able to casually unpack that response without comment. But admitting her crushed cat noir felt... off. She couldn't place it. Don't get mad. Marinette, he hissed. Adrian Agrest, she all but shouted back. The startled look on Cat's face paid homage to his namesake. You knew? He pressed himself to the back of the booth, and Multi Mouse felt the distance between them. What? You've known all this time? Known what? If you don't want to tell me what I'm a rebound for, fine, I guess, but I wish you didn't. What do you mean? 
I just told you. No, no, you didn't, you... He stopped, his jaw dropping as he looked at her. Multimouse. Yes, cat. Irritation buzzed in her chest, a finger pulling the string over and over between her rib bones. Who did you have a crush on? Adrian, she repeated herself. Adrian Agrest. Cat looked at the table, crossing his arms without a word. Multimouse felt the table wiggle from how he bounced his knees, and the plucks in her chest started pulling into something more than irritation. Why would he be upset about her having a crush on a classmate? Was it because Adrian got to see her every school day and he didn't? What are you, jealous? An idiot is more like it, Cat managed. The server came over and he paid the bill. Cat, you're not... Guilt digested in her stomach with the meal. Cat, you couldn't have known you were a rebound. You're right, I shouldn't have baited you like this. I'm... How could she apologize for playing the part of his rebound while actually being the girl he likes? That's a violation of trust. You're not the idiot at the table. No, little mouse. I am. You couldn't have known. And neither could you. Something about the way he responded chilled her blood. What do you mean? She spoke slowly. Because... Cat stood up and circled around to her seat, offering his arm as he leaned in to whisper in her ear, I'm Adrian Agrest. Part 6 Marinette Dupang Chang as Multimouse Dining at Chez Remy, Disneyland, Paris Multimouse felt her hair rise at Cat Noir's confession. No. No! Cat wasn't Adrian! <laughs> if Cat was Adrian, then... Oh, cheese and crackers! Multimouse swore, leaning back in her chair. You can't be serious! What, did you want me to grab Chloe and use her to make a dramatic reveal? Cat made an untranslatable gesture with his hands to show flamboyance, and Multimouse choked on a laugh. Therapy! Excuse me? We need therapy, Cat! Ouch! He pressed a hand to his chest. Your response to my identity is therapy? Really? Have some class, little lover. We're at a fine dining restaurant. After all, oh, okay, okay. First of all, we both ordered off the kids' menu. Multimouse straightened her back and leaned forward. And second of all, humor is my coping mechanism. It's either nihilistic disbelief or me melting into the floor. Multimouse? Cat tried. I really thought I was finally falling for someone who isn't you. She covered her face with her hands, not caring about her elbows resting on the table. What do you- Cat, if this doesn't work out, I'm sending you the bill for my therapy with multiple clinics. She peeked through her fingers to see him laughing. Oh, well then. Cat shook his head as he smiled at the tablecloth. I imagine I'll either need to be rich in heart or wallet moving forward. You aren't mad? Uh, truthfully, I'm not letting myself react yet. I'm gonna process this in private, then let you know. Oh. Uh, okay. Not to, like, give you anxiety or anything. I'm <laughs> not gonna change my mind or anything like that. Change your mind? I'm in this, Multimouse. 
Cat sighed and returned to his seat. I'm all in. Me too. Come to think of it, I haven't kissed you yet today, have I? Oh, there is that. She wasn't just kissing Cat from now on. She'd be kissing Adrian Agrest, her elusive and overbearing crush. Wait a minute. She'd already kissed Adrian Agrest. <gasps> She'd kissed Adrian all along. Multimouse? Cat tried. I like you, she whispered. But I still need a moment to freak out about kissing my unrequited crush. Cat froze, blinking. Oh, Camembert, he whispered. I've been kissing a ladybug this whole time. Glad we're on the same page, emotionally speaking. Thankfully, the server hadn't taken her water glass when she cleared the table. I can't justify getting upset with you liking the thought of kissing Adrian instead of me, your boyfriend, when I'm getting hot and remembering every kiss with you was one with Ladybug. At least we can be uncool together. We're sitting in the middle of the Ratatouille restaurant in Disneyland. Either we're the coolest couple ever, or the worst. Unable to control herself, Multi Mouse started laughing. Her boyfriend joined in, reaching out to hold her hand as they became a public spectacle. Superhero cosplayers hunched over a tablecloth, shaking in laughter without restraint. As long as no one overheard their conversation, it wouldn't become a scandal. <laughs> Question. She brushed tears from her eyes as Kat stood. Do we choke about this moving forward, or do we never breathe a word of it ever? Time will tell, little lover. He offered her his elbow. Shall we? Um, thank you. You know, I'm really glad you took advantage of me and being the guardian so we could date. Cat teased. Cat Noir! Multi Mouse hissed. Too soon. You... She deserved that zing. Come on, we're gonna be late for the fireworks. As you wish, my lady. Not little lover? It appears I have options now, don't I? Cat chuckled as she slid her arm around his. Don't get too creative, please. Multi Mouse tugged him toward the door. He leaned in, words tickling her ear. If we aren't going to celebrate Lady Noir, can we at least tell others that Marinette and Adrian are dating? Cotton candy twisted in her chest, soft, fluffy, and overly sweet as she smiled at the idea. I like that. A cat and his mouse. And two classmates without masks. Of course, little lover little lover. Who would have thought? Arm in arm, Multi Mouse, who used her mask to get over her crush, walked out of her and her boyfriend's usual spot, grinning and full in body and spirit. Sure, Marinette only made good plans when she wore her ladybug mask. Everything else was the whims of a klutz. But klutz or not, she had the luck of a ladybug on her side. Her and her love were lovers. Forehead kisses and all. Thank you so much for listening. That was Little Lover, the complete series, written and narrated by Miro Rose. If you liked this video, please give it a like and subscribe to this channel for more miraculous ladybug fanfiction. And if you're still listening, comment, little lover. I'll catch you in the next one.